SAM is an acronym for serving the song, the artist, and the marketplace. And all the song's characteristics need to effectively serve all three in order to bolster its hit potential. Many writers and producers now will mainly focus on just the song aspect, which is, of course, super important. But without priming the song to connect with both the artist and the marketplace as well, the song's chances from especially mainstream success will be significantly diminished. So super important, extremely important, too. So we'll begin with serving a song. And again, as I mentioned before, this is going to be a top level overview of everything that we're going to be diving super deep into over the next 10 weeks. So this is meant to get the gears turning and familiarize or refamiliarize you with everything that's going on. So when it comes to serving the song, there are four key song components that need to be firing on all cylinders. There is, of course, melody, which is arguably the most important. Hooks, which no hit song can do without. Lyrics and rhymes, and yes, lyrics do matter in a mainstream hit. And last but not least, arrangement and production, which ties it all together. And all these components need to be strategically organized to achieve the perfect balance between memorability, so ensuring the song gets firmly ingrained in the listener's head, and engagement, which is all about keeping the listener entertained throughout the song. And additionally, all the song's characteristics need to achieve perfect prosody, which is the coming together of the vocals, the music, and the lyrics to create a unified vibe and elicit emotion in the listener. And if just one of these aspects is off, the song is not going to realize its fullest potential. In addition to serving the song, as I mentioned before, all the song's characteristics need to effectively serve the performing artist. So the first consideration is to ensure that the song is believable to the artist and in line with audience expectations of them. Because if it's not believable that the artist would be performing the song based on their persona and the audience expectations, then the audience is not going to be able to connect with the song on a profound level. And on top of that, the artists themselves will have a much harder time delivering the song with conviction if they cannot relate to it. So for example, it would be like Olivia Rodrigo suddenly coming out with a Cardi B style hip hop track with a bunch of explicit language about her life on the streets. You know, it's not going to be believable for her or her target audience or anybody for that matter. Now, in addition to believability, another factor to keep in mind as an artist or when working with an artist is the importance of a signature sound. And what I mean by a signature sound is a compositional and or production quality for which an artist is known. And this is highly important on a few key levels. So it gives them and their songs a unique identity, which helps them to stand out from the pack and create a recognizable brand for themselves. It creates familiarity for fans and deepens their connection with the artist. And it provides a common thread across the body of work, which allows room for the artist to experiment or to capitalize on diverse trends while maintaining familiarity with their core identity. A signature sound can define an entire career or for artists who've been on the scene for a long time to find a certain time period. And it can be achieved in a multitude of ways, including through the production, the vocals, the lyrics, overall vibe, and even hooks. And many artists will possess more than one of these signature qualities. And one of the important things to note about a signature sound is that it goes both for artists and songwriters, producers alike. So whether you're appealing you know, directly to fans or you're appealing to a, a particular artist that you wanna work with, it's highly important not only to be familiar with that artist's work, but to also have your own unique sound that comes across in your writing and producing to set you apart from everybody else. You don't wanna be one of the bunch. The last component of the SAM principle is also extremely important, and that is serving the marketplace. And essentially what it boils down to is the song possessing an effective balance of what we call blend in and standout factors. So blending in is all about creating familiarity within your target genre and core demographic so that your song more easily connects. 
And among the ways that you can achieve this is through adhering to compositional and production best practices, using instruments, beats, harmony, vocal characteristics, and lyrics that are in tune with the audience that you're trying to connect with, and of course, strategically capitalizing on popular trends. And along those same lines, you could broaden the reach and success potential of your song by incorporating elements from other genres or by collaborating with artists from other genres. So for example, a pop song with R&B style vocals and trap beats, otherwise known as Ariana Grande, or a rapper you know, on a pop track to attract a uh, hip hop fan base. Now, equally as important is providing your song with a unique spin so that it stands out from the pack. And this can be achieved in a multitude of ways, including through the use of atypical genres and influences, about the lyrics, unique instruments, etc. And ultimately, this is really where your creativity comes into play. And again, it's the effective balance between the familiar and the unique that's going to enable the song to connect with the widest possible audience while simultaneously standing out from the pack. So just to give you some food for thought, looking at genre and influence trends on the Hot 100 Top 10 over the last few years, on the far left side of the graph of familiarity factors, such as pop, hip hop, and R&B. So incorporating these influences into your sound will currently make you more familiar and connectable with mainstream audiences. And on the far right side of the graph are more atypical qualities, such as show tune, which is an influence in Ariana's Seven Rings due to the sound of music interpolation, and also like uh, Roddy Rich's The Box, which features a classical influence uh, from its orchestra sample. And these are pretty much one-offs in recent years that have helped these songs to really stand out from the pack and get noticed. So this kind of graph, a lot of you probably realize, is available in the HSD Immersion database. So if you're a subscriber, Definitely use this because it's going to give you the lay of the land of what's going on within the mainstream music scene. And the way you use this, just to make a long story short, is you know we see that as familiarity, uh, familiarity factors, which is you know you have to take advantage of. But when we look at these unique spin factors over here, so like all these like unique instruments or genres or lyrical qualities or whatever, it's not to emulate what they did. It's to look in between the trends. It's to see well all right, they all did this, what can I do differently? What has not been done? You know, maybe they, you know, Norwegian death metal hasn't been included in the pocket in a long time. So I'm gonna include that in, whatever. Look in between the trends, see what you can do that nobody else has done, just so long as it's effectively balanced by those familiar qualities.